it's a frustration when people use um, cliche is not the right word, but the like the trigger words. Okay, cool. So, for example, if I'm reading, if I if I ever get caught up in a comment read, and people will use just like the buzzwords, you know what I'm talking about? Where they'll say they'll say, they'll say the stereotypical negative words or the buzzword positive words. Um, are you are, are they are you are you talking hockey terms like in our world? Anything doesn't matter when people use buzzwords that don't actually mean anything. It's it's so even a term like development, okay? It's like development. We even use that term, so maybe call me hypocritical, or whatever. But I know what I mean when I'm talking about development, and I feel like most people don't know or can't define that word well. So it's the words. It, you're, so you're basically saying words are used loosely. Yeah. Like a lot of people say, uh, literally, that's not a cliche word. That's just the one that bugs me. But even if you you said like you just said the term gaslighting, and like you'll see people argue with each other in the comments and stuff. Like quit gaslighting. You just said this, and whatever. it's like you bug me. With your, <laughs> you know what I mean? With your with your terminology, yeah, like all your buzzwords, I get very triggered. Yeah. By these t- these yeah. terms. Well, I get it. Yeah. I um, get it. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by the PowerTech Online Membership Program. If you've been listening to Andy and I wondering, hey, how are they able to get all this podcast content out there? Well, that's because of our members. For just $9.99 a month, you can get access to our online video library, including hundreds of videos of Coach Andy teaching and have the option for consultation calls with Andy or myself to go over anything you need. We can cover training, nutrition, coaching, parenting, agents, the junior college hockey path, whatever's of interest to you. You'll also be able to participate in our popular Ask Me Anything episodes, have access to special discount codes, and be given priority for any PowerTech in-person camps or events. If you like what we're doing here and you want to support us, this is the best way to do it. Visit powertechhockey.ca slash memberships or find the link in the description of this video to learn more. So what's up? What do you got? Had a game uh, last night? What's up? Had a game last night? Yeah, I went to I went to Kitchener last night to watch the boys play. It was good. Yeah, they had a good weekend. They're playing good hockey right now. They've been playing good hockey for a while. They got the roster back. Um, you know what? I, you know, um, a good roster makes a better coach. Better coach makes a good roster. Um, but good. But you know what? It's that goes. You know, it's so funny. Okay, let me just say this. This is. Uh, it's interesting because I've been. Uh, and and you know, I've said this a million times. I'm not just trying to get my son extra ice time. <laughs> but I've been saying this. You know, like. You can only like when you look at an organization and coaching, and I think maybe we're touching into this a little bit today. Like, you, you there's so many things that go into winning and losing, and d- coaches' decisions, and 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 when you're when you're when you're way back and you're looking from a bird's eye view or a fan's view or a parent's view, you can look and say, okay, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, and you start flipping your lid, right? And that's really how people go, and uh, you know, obviously with someone like our general manager. With the golf storm, he's got thirty years of of experience of coaching at this level or a higher, and and managing. So it's so funny where everybody else is panicking. He's like just like sitting there going, "Well, oh yeah, we need a trade or yeah." Mm -hmm." He's been here, done that a million times. You know, people fire. You know, people ask for the coach's head for, you know, as soon as there's a couple losses and and anything that looks like it might be uh, going sideways at all. It's like get rid of the coach, look what this team did. And it's like, once you, you, you got to get, let things marinate and stuff. And then look at the, look at the actual situations go on. So our, our boys had, you know, they had a, a month where it was ugly, like in February, it was like the, the, the kids were, you know, I know they were probably in their own heads a little bit too, like we're better than this, but the reality was, you know, even, even from a, from a roster standpoint, who you're playing with and stuff. And you can look and go, well, that doesn't even make sense. But the thing is, and that's what I told a lot of people and, you know, fa- fans and everything is like, you, you, you can't just, when you're missing a Cam Allen, like a top D in the league, the NHL draft pick for the uh, first third of the year or for more than a, for half a year, that's a big loss. When you're missing Matt Pacha goes in the NHL and you don't know how to replace that, or maybe you should, or you're not sure when, that's a huge loss. There's a hundred and some points there. And then... Every time someone would get healed up, we'd, we'd lose another big name. Like, we were playing with, like, a depleted lineup for not we, because I don't play that. I just cheer. I just I just love them. Um, but they, they, you know, they you play with a, a guy who's missing, and it's like, those aren't, like, small losses. 
they're huge and injuries and like and that happens to everybody but like it just seems like it just went one after another after another and so when you start looking at even the lineups you go well how come this guy's playing with this guy and it's like what do you want the coach to do honestly because you can't just you sometimes it's just like we just got to have checkers because we, we we're not going to put the puck in the net like different things like that right so anyways my point is like um my point is that they've come together and you know it's probably good timing but my other point was is it's adversity like when everything's always smooth you know if you have a great start great middle <laughs> and everything's perfect i mean that's that's a perfect season but at some point in everyone's career and everybody's season everybody's even in a game there's going to be bumps and bumps and uh, along the road and it's seeing it through and you know and and, and it's, it's about hard work and it teaches you a lot and I, I would say last thing I would say that the kids that the, the the boys on that team that have grinded through and like even the guys with the injuries coming back or whatever, the guys that have grinded through and stuck with it are better players because of it. They know that things aren't all perfect, right? And they know they can come back. They know they can be down and come back. Uh, and they're, you know, and then even from a coaching, I, I'm sure the coaching staff is better than they were because, you know, he, he they had to look and go okay today we have chicken shit and i got to make a chicken salad do you know what i mean and now it's like they got their roster back and you know now who knows what happens but i think it was i think it's uh it is down to the wire and there's a ton of good teams so it's anyways that's a long story yeah yeah yeah. well so kind of kind of switching gears but on the same thread because i think i, I want to tie it into kind of where i'm going of so of these guys it doesn't have to just be when we're talking about guelph either just any ohl team if you had to put a guess on it, like you don't, we don't have to quote you on the numbers, but how many of these kids do you think go on to have a actual profesh, professional career in hockey where they make money? Like this could be my job, and then when I retire, like I'm good. How many kids on the average OHL team? Just the, whatever, whatever the number. Like okay, so you're saying we got 20 OHL teams or 60 CHL teams. You're saying right now on this on these everyone's roster, how many guys are going to go out and make? Like a hundred grand or more a year for a long period of time. Yeah, where it's like for they, like ten years, twenty years. Yeah, like where it's like they th- this was enough where I didn't have to do anything else but focus on being a hockey player as my job. And and let's call let's say they retire when they're thirty four and they have to do a career change. They still have to work. Yeah, after, I think a high but, number would be five or six. That'd be a high number. Right. Five, three to five, okay. three might even be high, but three to five guys right. that could go. Up, so we're talking Europe, a like long uh, American League, some type of pro thing, NHL. Yeah, any of those. Yeah. So you're saying three to five. Yeah, I think that would out of that's going to be high. Coming out of the the top development league in terms of percentages of guys that play in the NHL or pretty close with the NCAA now. Yeah, I'd say that's high though. Okay, so five even would if be high, even if it's three. Yeah, even if it's let's say it's three. Okay, so what what happens to the rest of those guys? Like, what where do they go? Like, where do you think they go? Like just some examples of what they do after from okay, so from just like ask who you me know. general question. Yeah, just general. Like where would they go? Okay. Like a couple options. Like, of like as far do. as hockey or life, anything. Either. Okay. Well, what happens? Okay. Typically, you just look at our wall. Look at the guys that we train. Look at me, my friends. Typically, what happens is you have <laughs> when you get drafted, play college. You either you either go there with the mindset that you want to be a pro or you want to get your school paid for. Like I was just listening to a podcast with Devon Taves on it and he had no idea he was going to be a pro he just wanted a school paid for so for making money was a bonus for him but but let's say most guys go in and they want to be they're hoping to be pros it's um what happens a lot of guys will get to the 19 20 year old age and junior and some guys just know they fizzle out it's done they some guys just know it's over they might play like as far as being a pro so they play CIS, CIS or University Canadian U Sports, and or they try mucking out, thinking maybe they just they're gonna get better in uh, uh, the lowest level pro leagues, right? And some guys just go, okay, I, I just need to go and work or whatever. So there's there's a, I, I would say it's probably in thirds. I think it's I would, I, I, I'm cool. With yeah, that. and I think yeah. that's kind of life. It's like in thirds, a third third have the ta- like have talent, have skill. Or are stupid enough. <laughs> I don't mean that. Like they just they they cannot admit that they won't be that the dream is over. Like they don't have it, and that's okay. 
So I think a third pursue it for as long as they can. And I think you, you end up with a couple, a couple of them that uh, play American league and then up and down with the East coast and pro. Yeah. Would that have, I would say like four or five to four or five, six, seven years of that kind of thing. You have a few that go to, to CIS and try to, and then they try to pursue like, a Europe league, like the lowest level of Europe leagues, just say that I played pro for a little bit. And then you get a third that just say, you know what, done hockey. Uh, I'm going to be a fireman or a policeman or a ambulance man or accountant or whatever. But I would say it's thirds. Yeah, go ahead. So, so uh, you can answer for you and then I want to answer for me. How much time, if any, did no. you put into thinking about – um? what happens when you're done playing zero while you were playing zero yeah yeah so because no that's no guidance and if there was guidance i didn't want to hear it i was a hockey player and to some degree that's good for some people and for some to some degree it's not it's really good for someone that says i am i'm going to do this and there's no plan b i like that providing do you know what i'm providing providing that it you treat this like a job right then you give yourself a reason like you burn all the boats right you you say i am doing this yeah, that and works you for give, some people yeah. yeah and you give it like like you don't do it till you're 40 but you do it like you let's like say you're uh junior college or whatever and you say there are no options this is what i'm going to do and you get up and you eat and everything you do is to make yourself a better player and you actually, actually focus on everything you could do for five years. And then that's the timeline where you have to look at it and say, yeah, no, maybe, and then reevaluate. But for five years, I think you should, if this is what you want to do, you should and you have to have plan A and plan A only. And then, and then, and then if you're not going to be willing to dedicate everything or, and be, I don't like to use the world use the term realistic because realistic is not realistic actually, right? Because if because if someone's five six, they're not supposed to make the NHL, but five sixers do. And Matt Rempe wasn't supposed to be able to skate well enough, but he plays in the NHL. Like you know what I mean? So guys that, have, that where there's a will, there is a way. If you if you if you put everything into it, so, yeah, so, and willing to do other things. Sorry, no, no, it's okay. Yeah. So so for for you then, because I'll get to me in a second, but for you. Of this is like a stupid question, but had if you could go back and you would do it again, like would it have been useful or how would it have been useful? Who's that? Oh, uh, would it be useful or would it have been useful for you to obviously like have some preparation or think beyond or even if it was still in hockey, come up with a plan? So like you ended up being in hockey after. Yeah, but I had even, a, a, a small break and then I got back into hockey. Yeah, so even for you though as maybe you were realizing that, okay, the NHL thing isn't going to work out, even having a plan insofar as hockey is concerned, like even in, like, okay, I, I want to try to create a hockey business or something afterwards, that kind of preparation, I would imagine you would agree would have been useful or helpful to, to walk through or have some guidance through, or even just take some time on your own to try to figure it out in the same way you would figure it out hockey and practicing and all of that, doing some of that. Now, did you have anyone around you, whether it was coaches, whether it was uh, family, whatever, anyone that had ever said anything like that to you? That, hey, maybe th like think about preparing for after this? Well, Sam McMaster was our general manager in Sud when I played for the Sudbury Wolves. And he told me that if I ever needed to coach, come and see him because I'd make a great coach. And that was one thing. After that, no. there was. I mean, you get the... You get, well, here's the thing, right? You get advice. Like, see, see, the thing is you get, some people talk to you. Some people give you advice. It's just whether you're listening or how they bring it apart because, or not bring it apart, how they uh, um, present it to you. So if someone says, well, you got to prepare after hockey, you know, that's not really, you know, um, and, and, and who's saying it to you is really important. And, and you got to be willing to listen. Um, so you're asking me would it made a difference, right? No. Like, probably not. Because you weren't listening? Not listening, didn't want to listen. This is what I wanted, right? And and so I think at that time, um, probably not. I probably wouldn't have listened. And but but I th but here's one of those things. I think it's the drip method, anyways. 
it's you have to hear um, you have to hear things not even consistently but over and over and over and over if you, and if you're listening so i would say like if i'm a and this is what i feel like i've done as a parent is you're educating your kids slowly from a young age right it's how you present it to them right like it's it's um if you're negative, you say, like for me, the the thing was, if you don't have an education, you won't, you can't get a job. That never scared me, yeah. and I don't think it should scare a lot of people anymore, especially. Yeah. Because especially you know, my now, wife, me, yeah. my wife and I were, she was, she was, I piss her off when I do this. She goes, you know, you can't get anywhere without a grade twelve education. I go, yes, you can. She goes, no, you can't. You can't even sell cars. I go, yes, you can. Yeah. She goes, no, you can't. I said, I guarantee you right now because I, I know how to talk to good people. I can get a job selling cars. I can do real estate. I can do a ton of things. So that's not a scary thing, and I never, it never scared me before. But I think if you're educating your kids along the way and keep them aware and show them that this course would help you. See, here's the thing, right? Like as a hockey player, for me, is if teachers would have presented or parents would have presented or people that knew me would have presented it as how to make your hockey life better – if you read this book, it would make you like simple something stupid, stupid like if you read this book, you learn how to talk to people. You know how to talk to people. You have good interviews. You have good interviews on Hockey Night in Canada. Then you make more money, or you know. But all I need to know is do do good interviews, and you'd be able to speak well. I'd be like, oh, okay. Like, related there's to one hockey that some of yeah, you're everything in. should have been related to hockey for me because that's the only thing I really understood. So if if they if that was there. Right. If someone said finances, learn your finances, like because one day when you sign your when you make a hundred thousand dollars or your signing bonus is a hundred thousand dollars, you don't get a hundred thousand dollars. You only get sixty. Really? That's because I talked to a kid last year about that. He goes, "What?" I go, "Yeah, you're only gonna get that much." What do you mean? I go, "Because you have to pay your taxes, and then you're gonna have to buy insurance. You're gonna have to do this, this, and this." So that was an education to him. So that's if he, he always presented in your hockey money. And then if you have your hockey money, you can play for, you can make, you know, $10 million. And if you take this away and you buy some real estate or something like that, and that, then it makes money for you. Then maybe the kid gets, just goes, Oh, I would like to do that. Buy some real estate with my money and never have to work again and be rich. Right? Like how it's presented. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. So long so, story. Sorry. No, no, no. That's, that was, you did exactly what I wanted you to do there. So my point, I guess, bringing this up is uh, people don't think about this. Kids don't think about this and they're not taught about this. So even for me, I was a kid who always took school more serious than the next. And and like the other thing too is school kind of came easy to me. So it's not even really fair to say because it was kind of just like I didn't have to work hard to do well. So that's not really the same as someone who really struggles. Like math was just not hard for me. And so I didn't really earn that. It's not like I was really focused on school. Uh, so keeping with that caveat, I did take school more seriously than most people still. Um, but I still to the same thing. Like all I ever thought about was, was hockey. So I remember when I was in high school, I was in grade 11 or 12 and they had a, a professor, someone from the university of Windsor come in and they were in the physics department and I was really good at math and I really liked physics. That was my favorite subject in high school. And so he was talking about, you know, you can get into different kinds of medical research and all these things. And that was the first time anyone had ever talked about talked to me about anything that I could possibly do that wasn't hockey. That was the only conversation. That was like the only explicit conversation that I can remember. And so when I, we started having to apply for university in grade 12, I went through the same process, even though I knew I wasn't going because I was still playing hockey. Um, and I applied to all physics majors for that reason alone. I didn't even know what the other options were. I didn't even know what was a possibility. I didn't know what I could do. Uh, so I, I remember I ended up applying to the physics department. I got accepted. You had to apply or you could apply to like three different things. I applied to all three. I got into all three and I got to pick what I wanted to do. But they were all physics. They were all the same thing. You know, they're different streams of the same. It wasn't until my first year of university that I was talking to one of my cousins who worked uh, at the university and she was saying, well, if you're going to do physics, why don't you just do engineering? I was like, why would I do engineering? Like, I like physics. She's like, well, engineering, it's just applied physics. And you can do co-ops and internships and get a job and make connections in industry and all that stuff. Whereas if you just do physics, you might be able to do some of that also, but it's not as easy. You kind of have to carve your own path where here it's kind of built for that. You can go and make, and I was like, oh, 
that makes sense. So I did my whole first year of physics when I, and then ended up changing to engineering anyways. Whereas if someone would have had that conversation with me a year before, I would have went right into engineering. Yeah. So my, my point saying all this is these conversations don't happen very often. And I don't want to frame what I'm going to talk about in terms of just education, because to your point, I also believe that there's many different ways. Like you could go to college, you could just do a, you could do an apprenticeship, you could do start a business from scratch at home, like all that stuff I believe people can do. I don't think you have to go to university or have to get a degree or a diploma or whatever. The piece of paper I think means less and less today. Um, maybe like 10 years ago or, or more, it was the thing. You had to have this thing. I think people value that less and less and things are a lot more based on what you can actually do. So I agree with what you were saying, but um, I, got a, I got a message from uh, a guy that is coaching at a, at a school and he was talking about um, kind of the university thing and, and picking where you're going to go and all this. And I wanted to read it because I thought it was a really great message. Um, so I'm going to kind of just go piece by piece and then we can kind of just stop and interject. It might take two minutes. It might take an hour. So um, first, this is from Mike. He said I could use all of this. And so the subject line that he sent was choosing the right university, uh, balancing athletics and academics for future success. That was the title of his message. So even just in that, when you're talking about choosing the right university, right away, the implication is already, I should think about where I want to go. And, not and, but normally what you would think is, I'm just going to go to university. Not necessarily thinking which university, why should I go to this one versus that one? What am I going to do at this one versus that one? So even in just the heading, this is what attracted me to this particular email because I was like, that's, that's like a good way to word it. So anyways, this, this is from Mike. Um, I'll just start it off and then we'll go from there. So uh, he said, this, this season I returned to coaching hockey with Purdue Ice Hockey as an assistant coach. Just for everyone, Purdue is a ACHA Division Three hockey school. So it's not like Division One Michigan. It's okay. Uh, but Purdue is a, really, is a great school. They actually have a really good basketball team. I think their basketball team was ranked first this year, Division One. But uh, anyways, it was a great season with fantastic coaches uh, and an exceptional group of players. Despite the challenges faced by Purdue hockey, we performed better than expected. We only practice six times a month, an hour and a half away from campus at 10 p.m., and often had incomplete player attendance. Recently, we qualified for nationals and achieved a one and two record. The experience at nationals prompted me to reflect, leading me to write this message. Uh, it may be a bit lengthy, but it's especially relevant for players aging out of junior hockey or high school students graduating without an NCAA Division One commitment. Uh, I believe it's important to share this message. So he wrote a little letter here that is kind of for for players to listen to, and it's kind of along the lines that we're talking about. So uh, here he goes. Dear high school hockey players and junior hockey players, as you embark on your journey to college and consider continuing your hockey career at the collegiate level, it is crucial to make a decision that will not only shape your athletic future, but also set you up for future success in your professional life beyond the rink. While the allure of a fully funded hockey team at a small liberal arts college may be tempting, it is essential to prioritize your academic pursuits and choose a university that will provide you with a competitive degree and valuable opportunities in the job market upon graduating. So the first, like this one just hit me right away because this is exactly what we're talking about. And I think kids do this a lot. So for example, if you're, let's say you have a division one offer. Okay. So outside of that, if you have a division one offer, you kind of have to take what you're offered to get, if you want to get, uh, let's say you have three options for division one, but you say, oh, I really like this other university over here. It's like, well, they're not offering you the money. So if you want to have a scholarship, then you have to pick one of these three. So if we put the division one kids aside, and now you're talking about the next tier of players. So this would be now the guys that aren't the 1% guys, right? So if you're in grade 12, getting a division one scholarship, you're, that's a pretty rare, or grade 11 even, that's a pretty rare um, occurrence. If you are a great... If, if you are, are okay, because yep. you're so young, right? Yep. You'd be like a true freshman going in out of out of high school. So, so for if you're not that person, this kind of process now is going to apply to you. So, if you're aging out of junior and you're making a decision about college, and again, this isn't about university per se. It's just about the thought process of making decisions past hockey. So, what 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 Mike was saying here is like, you need to make a decision that actually aligns with where you want to be if hockey isn't a thing, and if if you don't end up playing Division One hockey, even if you do end up playing Division One hockey, your likelihood of making a career out of hockey is very, very low. So if you're not going to be a Division One hockey player or fill in the blank OHL, whichever way you want to cut it, 
you're probably not going to be a professional hockey player that's making any kind of money that is relevant, you know? Yeah. So this is where like the 99.9% th- chance. Yeah. So this is kind of like the thought process. Now we're introducing this to players. I think it's important for them to hear is like, you need to start thinking about if this now doesn't work, if, if, and you have to have some preparation and thinking about where you're going to go, you know? So anything to add on that or no? No. Well, the only thing I would add on that is that if you're, if you, if, if you're, so we'll keep it as a college player. If you, if you are, uh, you don't have a whole lot of offers and the scholarships aren't full, but yeah, you you probably, it's probably not a bad plan to, to look at the school more than the hockey for sure. Not more than the hockey, but like there's, it, it will be important that your education you're there to get some schooling. Yes. At least consider, right? Well, so, yeah, because, yeah. So, he, uh, continuing the, his email here. As an assistant coach at Purdue University, one of the top public institutions in the United States, I've witnessed firsthand the transformative impact of balancing academics and athletics. At Purdue, our hockey players understand that academics come first, and our team is composed of dedicated students, uh, dedicated student athletes who excel both on the ice and in the classroom. By taking their academics seriously, our players have secured impressive paid internships and landed high-paying jobs upon graduation, setting setting themselves up for long-term success beyond their hockey careers. So this is now exactly what I said. You're you're considering what... So if I go to school X, what will I get out of school X? And again, I want to branch this out past just university. If I go to apprenticeship X, if I want to go to this college, if I want to start uh getting mentored by this person where is that going to land me after so one example for me if i could go back and go to a different school i would have went to a waterloo or uh, mcmaster where their engineering programs are what the school is known for very high quality program and that's not to say windsor's isn't it's just theirs is better so if i was to go or more reputable let's say well that i i know waterloo for example blackberry's right there and, so, and more now. Yeah. Right? So so you've got that tech industry in Waterloo. Right. Go to school there. You're an engineer. You probably could do the intern, land a job, right. have a career. So if I'm if I'm evaluating my options and I say, okay, I want to be in the tech space, which is where engineering ended up landing me or would have landed me if I didn't do this, starting off from a degree in Waterloo or starting off with some roots in Waterloo would have gave me way more opportunities to explore the tech world because that's a hub. If my goal was something different and I wanted to do in Broadway, then Broadway? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> acting yeah. On, on stage. Maybe maybe I would look at Juilliard instead of going to University of Windsor, whatever. Good good choice by yeah, the way. Right? Yeah. So you need to understand what when you're picking where you want to go, even if you're coming from the perspective of hockey, tie that into what you might get out of the school you're going to, which is kind of, I think, what the the point here is that he's getting at. So obviously he's at Purdue, so he's making the pitch on Purdue that why that's a good place to be because it's a high quality academic institution. But even, I don't, I don't know personally what Purdue is known for, as an example. So if they come to me and say, hey, come play hockey here, if now I know, okay, I need to have a, a backup plan if my hockey doesn't work out, then I need to know what am I going to get out of Purdue? What like what is that university going to do for me for my future endeavors? Right? Anything on that? Uh, Continue now. While hockey is undoubtedly a significant part of your college experience, it's crucial to remember that it is only a stepping stone to your future. Pursuing a degree from a reputable institution like Purdue University ensures that you will receive a quality education that is recognized and respected in the job market. Investing in your academic and professional development during your college years will open doors to a wide range of opportunities and set you on a path to a successful and fulfilling career. So this kind of what I was saying with um, the engineering piece, if I come out of, so it's actually funny because this is very related to how people think about hockey. So if I come out of Waterloo University with an engineering degree, that inherently is looked upon more favorably than one from Windsor. Okay. If you go play hockey at Michigan, versus Niagara as a division one school, people inherently look at, oh, you played at Michigan. 
this is automatically better than playing at Niagara. And that exact same logic is what we're talking about here when you're talking about university. So if I go to Michigan and they're not well known for their engineering program, but I want to go there because of the hockey, even though I know I'm going to be an engineer, it might have been a better choice to go to this next school. Western Michigan. Right? Or, I don't RIT, know. Like yeah, RIT. Whatever. So, so a place like this that is known for the tech part because I know that's where I'm going to go. But that takes some thought beforehand you know it has nothing to say like and we're not discounting the hockey like this is the thing it can be done together it can be done at the same time you know what i mean anything on that well i think just part of that comes down to where you get your offers from right yeah for sure yeah for sure but but wouldn't so if you're if you're a player and you were because i believe this happens to be true right uh which one does um um jeff's go to all right Uh, RIT, RIT. So it's a technology school. Yeah. It's a Institute engineering technology. school. Yeah. So if that was your interest in life and you were a good hockey player and you and you sent a feeler out there, there's probably a chance, providing you're a good enough hockey player, that you get a an interest, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And and again, this is more if if we're not talking about the NCAA kids. Even if we are, though, if you're fortunate enough to have multiple offers, then I I believe personally, if you're playing Division One hockey wherever you're playing. Like you're getting scouted, you're gonna get opportunity, whatever. From a hockey perspective, maybe it's a little better to be at this school than that school, uh, what have you. But if you're thinking of it beyond just the hockey, then maybe it makes more sense to go to a school that's more well tailored to uh, your future thing that you're gonna be involved in. Now, I'm not saying turn down Michigan if they offer you a Division One scholarship, man. That's not what I'm saying. But just th- you should at least go through the process. You know, well, think. but the the vice versa on that is that if Michigan is offering you a full ride scholarship. Niagara probably is too. Yeah, and everything in between. Right, exactly. So, so, you, so that's a great point too, because then you could actually have more options than you think. You know, if you shop around a little bit, if you are that fortunate. Um, but anyways, to the point of of this, it's exactly that. Just getting into that thought process where you're thinking about more than just I'm just going to stick handle for the rest of my life because you might not, and it's actually really likely that you won't. And you, it doesn't take anything away from your hockey to put some thought into this other stuff. You know, so like to your point at the start, like you're talking about not having a plan B is a, that works for some people, man, that can work for. And a lot of people will say that, like, don't have a plan B plan, plan A, go for it. All your chips are in and that can work man. that for sure that can work. But I think it doesn't even if that is your philosophy, it doesn't take anything away from that by checking a box over here. You know, and I talked to a lot of our academy guys about that. It takes very little effort to make sure that you have your schoolwork done. It takes very, when you're in high school, it takes very little effort to make sure that you're getting a decent grade. It takes very little effort to make sure that you're still keeping all your doors open beyond just hockey for your academic purposes. You know, if you want to be cleared for NCAA, if you want to be cleared for U sports and make sure you have all the things that are required, it takes nothing away from your hockey pursuit to make sure that those things are also checked off. So when people tell me, well, I don't want to have a plan B. It's like, you're not having a plan B. Like you're still fully committed and all in on your hockey thing. You know, it takes, you have to go to school anyways. You have to be there anyways. You have to do work anyways. So making sure that you have the box checked, there's nothing wrong with having that also taken care of, you know? And I think for a lot of young hockey players, they can get into the mindset of, I only care about this. I don't care about this. So I'm just going to do this. And whatever happens with the school part, I don't care because right now I'm just all about the hockey. Going back to you as a kid, if people would have relayed a message to you relating it to hockey, then it probably would have been a lot easier to get you on board with make sure I have my grades checked or make sure I learn about finance or make sure I know a little bit about real estate or these kinds of things. Just education in general. like Yeah, just in general. Just in general. Make things interesting for kids. That was the big thing. Yeah. And so this is kind of, if you don't have that, if you don't have the adult that can say that to you, hopefully this is kind of just opening that perspective of it's not taking anything away from your pursuit with your sport to make sure you have these other things checked off, you know? Yeah. I think, I I think it's just important to have like outside of the school piece is to have something that stimulates your brain, uh, get you ask questions, take you away from the game a little bit so that you've, you know, you're exercising a different part of the brain. And as you said, it doesn't, 
it will not hinder your hockey whatsoever. And then the, the other important thing is to realize which guy you are as a player is realize like there's like, we, we know a couple that are pursuing hockey. Like there's no plan B when there should be a plan C, D, E, and F if you're counting on hockey. Right. It's like, they're all, but there's, you're fooling yourself. No, you're not fooling yourself. You're not facing reality. Yeah. I think it's kind of to your point talking about, um, I almost think of it like multi-sport. That's kind of how I think when I think most people would agree by training other sports, it helps hockey. And from the brain perspective, I think doing other things, stimulating your brain in different ways will also help hockey. Kind of to your point about getting other things that will give you some kind of stimuli. Yep. Stimuli. More than one. Right. So uh, back to the message here. Uh, Moreover, at Purdue University, we believe that hockey is more than just a sport. It's a platform for personal growth, lifelong friendships, and unforgettable memories. Our players not only excel on the ice, but also develop valuable life skills such as teamwork, leadership, and perseverance that will serve them well in all, all aspects of their lives. While the allure of semi-professional hockey may be enticing, it is essential to consider the financial realities of pursuing a career in sports. The financial stability and long-term prospects offered by a quality education cannot be overstated, especially when compared to the uncertainties of a semi-professional hockey career where earnings are limited. So those two pieces, I think, were the the biggest ones that um, resonated with me because that was kind of me. So um, when he said at the start there, hockey is more than just a sport. Um, It's a platform for personal growth. That's truly now, I didn't think this at the time, but that's truly now how I think about it. And even with, I've been meeting with so many parents over the last month about this academy thing now. And this is kind of, the purpose behind the academy of what we're doing is I, I finish every um, every one of these meetings saying this. It's like I was 100% sure that I was going to be an NHL player, if not a pro player, where that was my career. I was 100% sure of that. Only to realize that that would be that'd be a long, tough road to get there from the, the point that I was at when I finished playing junior. And I was fortunate where I didn't even do this on purpose, but I was paying attention to the lessons of hockey along the way. And that was partially because of my parents. I was fortunate to have good parents. Um, And I was fortunate to have paid attention to whatever degree I was responsible for doing that. But I picked up on those and I figured out how to apply those uh, to my academic career after that. And I could have gone on to do whatever I wanted to do in engineering. If I wanted to do that, I decided to not do that. But that was only because I, I paid attention to all of these things that Mike was laying out here, you know? So, go ahead. Yeah, so I, I was thinking when, they, when you pulled that out, I think this is very important, is that he said that hockey's not, hockey could be used for other things. And I agree, but you have to be alive and you have to be awake to get that message. So I always say that to people. It's like, if you play for the Kitchener Rangers and you're there for four years, or if you play for Cornell, Big Red, or whatever – team that you're you're with junior whatever and you're there for like especially if you're a three four five year guy if you come out of there and you don't know anyone you're you're an idiot you're an idiot so that i don't think that statement applies to the idiot and i i don't mean it like that i do though but like yes like so we could say this with if you play your youth hockey if you it's about leadership right people will say you learn how to be a leader you learn how to be a team player not really not actually really for the people that have parents that guide those kids and teach them lessons every single day. Then they learn about leadership. Then they learn about adversity. Then they learn about team. But if you go and you just play and then at the end of it say, well, cause a lot of people say that around here. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to be a fireman or a, a, a cop because you know, it's teamwork. Right. And, but they played hockey, but they don't even understand the concept of a team outside of, you know, I grew up in a dressing room. So who cares? That could be like pretty detrimental for the rest of your life. If you just say, grew up in a dressing room, I know how teams work. Yeah. That side. But do you know how a team functions? You know how to make a team better. Do you know how to be a guy that, you know, when the, the jackass guy refuses to clean up, you know, instead of saying nothing or going about it the wrong way, maybe showing the message that even though I'm an older guy, I'll pick it up and just, you know, 
clean that up, eh, bud? Like sending messages the right way to be a team guy. And it's the same thing with leadership. Well, you played hockey is, you know, leadership. I'm like, well, I know most hockey players that I know are not leaders in life, right? The ones that paid attention are. The ones that had mom and dad and, and the surrounding people that taught them what leadership was, they're leaders. And you can see when they're in a group outside of their environment of hockey that they can lead and they can be a team player there or personal there. So to say, and I'm not not saying anything negative about that, that what the the statement that this person said is very true. That it's more than just hockey. Everything's more than just hockey. And hockey is a great vehicle to to expand everything in your life. Your networking field. But right? So if you go to if you play for Kitchener Rangers for five years and you haven't met, met another person, you're an idiot. That's what I mean by that. Because you should be able, like, they put you out in the community. You should be able to shake some hands. Out of the 300 people you meet in a year that are, like, whether it's in volunteer work, whether it's in a car dealership or wherever you do your public speaking, your public experience, exper- public what? Appearances. If you are smart enough to ask a question and be interested in someone's life, that, because you have some sort of small celebrity status in that field, goes a heck of a long way and that could be a, a, a just a career launcher for you if you do it right so that's what i would say and this is why i always think it's important and it's not anybody's duty as a coach but to make you a better coach it's teaching those lessons all the time right when we go to a restaurant it's thank you and it's super polite super nice help the person put the dishes t- together to make their life easier so that they're, you become a better person. And I think as parents, when you teach, and this is what I always, you know, like I'm not Superman, that's for sure. But when we're talking about group, building a leader and building a player and all the things that we talk about, where does it come from? Right? Where does it come from? So we can put statements like you become a leader, you're a team player. We can do all that stuff. It's just words like what you said at the beginning of the thing. It's cliches. It's a bunch of shit. We talk about it. Should be on the fly. Should be a fireman. I don't know why they didn't hire me. I was a hockey player. The hell does that have to do? You ever carry a wrench? Right? It doesn't mean anything unless it's applied. That's where your leadership in the household you come from, the people you surround with, surround yourself with, help you become all those things that hockey affords you to be if you choose to be that yeah you know what i mean yeah and that his his the way he worded this exactly that it's like it's a platform hockey is a platform it provides you with the opportunity if you take it you have to take the opportunity you know you have to actually notice the lesson that's there if you're fortunate to have someone who's showing you that here's the lesson right now then that's great but if you don't have that you still have to notice it like two that came to mind for me is with our guys one i always talk about with them is swearing because I swear and swearing doesn't particularly bother me to a limit. And it also bothers me more in certain environments than others. So what I say with our guys, with my U18s and with my younger kids too, because they swear. And this is the thing, like with, even with the younger kids, do you think they don't swear? Like they're swearing with when they're with their buddies. So rather than say, there's no swearing, stop that. Never. I say, you guys can talk however you like, but know that sometimes there's people around Sometimes there's people that could give you opportunities that can hear what you're saying. Do you want them to think less of you or think you're an idiot or think you're a trash mouth because you don't know how to conduct yourself in front of other people? So that's the lesson there. So I say, you swear, you can talk however you want, but you need to know that there's an environment where that won't cost you and there's an environment where it will cost you. And they need to learn that lesson. And that's one example that just came to mind. The other one for me is when we leave rinks I always make sure one of my policy rules is there's no garbage left in the dressing room. You pick your shit up and you throw it out. And I, I've had this several times where I've made last person out send me a picture of the dressing room when they leave. So I'm on the bus and I'll get a picture or the hotel if we're eating in the hotel lobby, they have to clean up. I want a picture of the, of the lobby when you guys are done. And they do it. And now, wow. And they, might, they might do it and hate it and say this is stupid. Yes. But it's done, and you don't look like a jackass, right. and neither do they. And then the hotel staff say, "Wow, what a great group yep. of kids!" Hundred percent. And, and I've had co- I've had compliments from parents and from different people about this group of kids, older group in particular, uh, that they're just great kids, very polite, and all this. And I'm not 
taking full credit for that because they were doing this long before I had them. But those are things that they've picked up on and good for them. Like kudos to them for picking up on those lessons and not being a bunch of goofs, you know? And that's just one piece of uh, one op type of opportunity you can get in terms of learning lessons from the sport, you know? And I think the networking piece or meeting people shaking hands like you're saying is huge. And that was something that I never took seriously. Because if I, if I had a coach in junior that would have said, hey, we're going to this event, this guy that is running it is the fire chief and he probably will be for the next 15 years. So if any of you have ever thought of being a firefighter, this might be a good guy to say hi to, you know, talk to a little bit, maybe ask him a question about what he does if you're interested in that. Nobody ever told me that. No one ever said that to me, you know? And so you could get those extra things if you're smart enough, observant enough, whatever the term is, to notice that it's, it's passing you by through hockey. There's the vehicle again, you know? Yeah. Well, so. we're talking uh, with my kid, but, you know, there's a couple people. One's his billet. His dad, really smart with money. Really smart with money. Engineer, too. And uh, went through some stuff with Charlie. I said, that's fantastic. Man. Like, he explained a lot of stuff. And I said, that's why you have to kind of keep your eyes and ears open and ask questions. And that's what he did, right? So, uh, you know, Brett was telling him all kinds of stuff. And then there's another billet that's good friends, uh, like he knows very well. Um, and I said, if you have questions about money or something, ask ask Glenn. So he's like, yeah, what, what does he do? I said, ask him, all right? He's a venture capitalist. What's a, what's a venture capitalist? Well, that means I give money to invest. I, I invest money into companies to make a lot of money. That's interesting, right? And even if it goes nowhere, it doesn't go anywhere. Still, you got it. What's a venture capitalist? Well, I'd like to do that. <laughs> or maybe I wouldn't. I wouldn't give my money away to someone else to make money. Like, but you get aware of things, right? But, but, but at the end of the day, but this, the, this is my point, right? Another point is that you've got a guy that's a venture capitalist. And let's just say that you made all kinds of money as, as a hockey player. That it all worked out. And you went and back to the town that you went to play junior or college hockey with. And you said, hey, you know what? I've got like uh, $10 million here saved up. What do I do with it? This guy actually knows what to do, and he can might make you a hundred million out of it. But if you've never had the conversation, why would you answer your call? Exactly. Just be. It's very simple. Yeah. No. A hundred percent. Um. So last little part here, and then we that's how I made my first billion. Eh? Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're the smartest people ever. Mm -hmm. That's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody yeah. should listen to everything I say yeah. all the time. Yeah. Uh. In conclusion, I urge you to carefully consider your options and prioritize your academic future when choosing a university to continue your hockey career. By selecting a reputable institution like Purdue University that values both academics and athletics, you'll not only enjoy a high caliber hockey experience, but also lay a solid foundation for a successful and rewarding future beyond the rink. Remember, hockey is temporary, but your education and the opportunities it provides are enduring. Choose wisely and set yourself on a path to a bright and pr prosperous future. Best wishes for your academic and athletic pursuits, Mike. Um, <clears throat> so that, that last part, um, again, I want to, kind of pull it out even broader than just picking your academic um, path in terms of what university you would go to. I want to broaden that out to anything, picking whatever you're doing after, because some guys don't want to go to school. Some guys want to go to be a plumber. Some guys want to be a police officer. Some people want to start their own business in their basement. Some people want to work at a nonprofit. Some people want to do whatever. So this doesn't just apply to universities. The logic is the same. It's like you need to carefully consider your options. And he, for him, obviously, he's at Purdue University, so he's going to be biased towards the academic pathway through education um, at an actual institution. But prioritize your academic future when choosing university. You could say that same thing. Prioritize what is good for you in the future when you're choosing a job, uh, opportunity, whatever you want to pursue. That's the way you can you know, bring it out to be not just about the school you're picking. Um, and if you select something that's reputable in the area that you care about, if you want to be a real estate agent, there's, I'm, I know nothing about real estate. There's probably some places that are better than others <laughs> in terms of where you get a certificate for it or where, when you be, where you become a real estate agent from or what company you join. There's better and worse, you know? And so if you don't have this mindset going into it, you're on this vehicle called hockey, you have all these opportunities, and then you could have taken advantage to do X, but instead you did Y and missed the boat over here, you know? And that's something that is easy to let slip if you're just thinking about, well, I want to go play hockey and I don't care where, and I'm going to go to the place that has the coolest drink and the coolest dressing room and gives me the most free stuff. 
because I'm thinking about how cool my day will be tomorrow instead of how cool my life could be in five to 10 years. Yeah. You know, and that's a hard thing for young yeah, guys. It's hard to do, for man. young guys. It's hard to do. Like five I, years is a lifetime. Yeah. And I, I was, I was sitting with, uh, I was sitting with a kid the other day. He's a, uh, he'd be U U 14. So he's thir- turning 14. Um, and we're talking about next year and playing and all this. And the kid just fundamentally is not concerned about it because obviously he's 13. I, his parents were there when we were chatting and, and they are much more concerned about it, obviously, because they're the adults in the room. So, so I think my, my point of that is kind of along the lines of what you're saying. It's that slow drip. It's that hearing it. It's that having it in your environment. It's parents saying it, coaches saying it. And then along the way, this is the process of maturing as a kid. You know, you start to pick up some of these things that you consistently hear or that you hear frequently, or even if it's not frequently or consistently, you have just heard more than once over and over the people that you're around are like that. And, and that's one thing that I appreciate about myself as a coach is I can say to these kids, I'm an engineer. I'm not a hockey player. And they're like, oh, like, and they start asking the question, like you said about the venture capitalists, like you're an engineer. Like, I didn't know you're an engineer. Why are you an engineer? How, how come you're working in hockey? Why aren't you doing engineering? And they start the question asking, you know, so there's these opportunities that you'll have using hockey as a vehicle. If only you'll notice. And the younger you are, obviously, the more help you would want to have from the adults that are kind of yeah. around you, right? Well, here's, a, here's one that, that every hockey player could kind of relate to or not relate to. So from what you've seen in my business, how many guys get done hockey? What's the next thing that they typically say they want to do or do, try to do? Oh, like coach. Coach, 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 yeah. coach, coach, right? So... If you asked a 18-year-old kid, 16-year-old kid, because they're in so involved in hockey to run a practice, how many guys could do, run a practice? How many guys could explain a penalty kill? Yeah, not how many. many guys, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, that's the thing that you love and that you're right into. So that's how unaware, and I'm not saying it in a bad way, unaware people are, right? right? And they think, oh, coach, I'll, I'll coach. I'm a hockey player. And then you get behind a bench because I've done it, right? Like, I've got experience in all this stuff all could be like even the hockey camp or the hockey schools. It's like, well, I, I'll just do that. It's like, okay, how? Yeah. Right? It's a business and there's how, – how is it going to be good? And then coaching, how, is it, how does it run? Like where do you start? Where do you finish? Like some guys are good at it, some guys aren't. Yeah. And are you willing to watch a bunch of clips? So that's like sometimes you got to look at your own education if you want to be – excel at the game itself and maybe get a job in it itself. Like do you do anything else to make yourself intelligent at it? Have you ever watched video or just watched power plays exclusively just to say, oh, this is how power plays run. And this is why they break down or entries or whatever it is, right? Yeah. And for for sure, like somebody like you, where you had someone say to you, hey, you'd make a great coach. For some people, it's they actually would want to coach and actually would be a good coach or good GM or what. There's buddies I played with. I'm like, man, you'd be 10 times the GM that you ever were as a player, you know, and that happens. But for a lot of these guys, we deal with them every year. I get messages from these guys all the time that used to play or whatever. It's that they don't know what else to do. It's not that they actually want to coach. And I guess part of my, another piece I can t- kind of tailor into this is if you have never heard of another choice, you don't even know what you like. You don't know what you want to do. A lot of them will just think, oh, I'm going to go coach because it's just a continuation of the fun I had when I was playing junior or playing wherever, or playing college. And that can be true for sure, but there's an actual job attached to it now where you don't know if you want to do that job or not for some people or for a lot, I would argue. For some people, they do know what the job would be like and they would love to do that. But for a lot of them, it's like, I don't want to know what I want to do. I want to push off making the decision on where to go next and just stay locked into the hockey cycle because I don't know what else to do. And I find that more often than not with guys that are coming out of college or coming out of junior and don't know where to go or what to do. Because they've never thought about another choice. They've never thought about, oh, I could be a engineer, architect, doctor, plumber, electrician, power line guy, ditch digger, whatever. They haven't even been, this is not in their awareness. And maybe they would love it. Maybe they would like to start their own business building decks. Maybe they would like to do who knows what. But they haven't met, paid attention to, thought about, considered any of these other things. And it's like, okay, I'll just go coach. Because that's the easy, that's the easy choice. It's almost like the... Some people are forever students where they just keep going back to school. They get the next degree. Yeah. Another a master's, a PhD, a researcher, a, t, a university prof, you know, and they just are a forever 
institutionalized student because they never they didn't want to have to face the fact that I need to make an adult decision now and figure out what career path. And you you could just easily keep staying in that cycle. It's the same thing as the hockey player kid, you know. And I'm not saying that's bad. For some people, that's what they want to do. They want to be a professor and do research and all that. Um, but it's it's about having the thought process going. And I think that's a a huge thread for me personally. Uh, uh, like a big part of my philosophy with hockey, with the academy thing we're doing, with teaching kids, with all of this, is that. So, like, hockey is the vehicle because that was me. That's why I relate to it. It was me. I was the guy that wanted to do the hockey thing and then ended up using it. Yeah, I stayed in hockey, but could have gone and done whatever job in engineering. Could have went, could have went to California if I wanted to. Could have went to Waterloo if I wanted to and got jobs there. Uh, had opportunities to do that kind of stuff. And I decided to go back to hockey because that's what I wanted to do. But that's the impression I want kids to walk away with is you, you have to start to think about some of this stuff, which is why I really like this message from Mike. It's, it's think about the choice you're making. Don't just follow your hockey nose and go to the, the sexiest place that you can go to because that would be cool tomorrow to wake up and go to that dressing room or, or whatever. There's more to it than that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally know. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's all I had for today. Anything, anything to add? No, I think, I, well, the last thing I would ask for parents, coaches, that's why it's important when you show people why or give them reasons why they're doing things. So anything you talk about, try not everything all the time, but most things that you talk about, give the kids a reason why they should be interested in it. Yeah. Right. For sure. Yeah. So, so uh, thanks Mike for bringing that in. I don't even know if he listens to all the full episodes or not, but sounds like he does, but yeah, I don't know, <laughs> but, but thanks for writing that in. That was like good inspiration for the episode. And it's a really good message. I think for, players parents coaches everybody in hockey it's it's it can be about much more than that you know so uh i'm gonna stop now and then uh, we'll be back next week <laughs>